So uh, let's uh, go uh, and start uh, lecture 10, function approximation. So you can, uh, instead of uh, tabular methods, you can uh, uh, use a function to approx uh, approximate either the uh, V, state value function, or the Q, the action value function. So uh, for the Q, you can either uh, use A as an input, or you can uh, compute all possible uh, Q uh, functions for uh, all possible actions. Uh, if you use neural networks, uh, it corresponds having to having A as the input and producing one Q as A or uh, producing all QSAs for all possible A's. So I think uh, Carla mentioned this before, uh, because you need all the uh, Q uh, AIs for all A's for computing, computing the arc max uh, A, the greedy policy. Uh, so the, uh, the latter approach is uh, predominant uh, in these days. So uh, the mean squared error, uh, I mentioned this before uh, in the imitation learning lecture, but uh, just to uh, reiterate, uh, so uh, suppose we have a real value function v pi, the blue curve, and we use a linear function to approximate uh, the v pi. v hat is the estimated uh, value function. So we, we want to minimize the value error, which is expectation over uh, with expectation uh, under policy pi for the squared difference between v pi and v hat. So expectation is uh, taking a uh, sum of all the states uh, with uh, the weighting factor mu uh, as probability distribution of state S when following policy pi. And sum over all S of mu S is equal to one. So this is uh, just the definition of expectation. So we want to minimize uh, this uh, value error. Uh, we can use a gradient, gradient descent. So here the uh, x-axis corresponds to the weight vector w. So we typically use uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, bold letter to represent uh, a vector and uh, a uh, non-bold letter to represent a, uh, a scalar. So in general, it should be a, a bold uh, vector, especially for neural networks. In, there may be millions of weights in a uh, deep neural network. But uh, the uh, the cost function uh, is a uh, cost function is a uh, scalar, a loss. And uh, every, every time you follow the, uh, the gradient, uh, gradient is a symbol here, uh, represents a vector of uh, partial j over partial w1, partial g over partial w2. Uh, okay, so uh, the w1, w2s are not vectors. These are elements. Uh, these are elements of the vector, weight vector. Uh, 
And uh, the alpha is the step size parameter. Typically, uh, it's gradually reduced uh, as you uh, run the gradient descent. So, uh, so here's the uh, gradient descent for minimizing the mean squared value error we saw before. Uh, first, we can take the gradient operator inside the sum because it's uh, taking gradient uh, with regard to the weight factor W. So it's not the sum over mu is not uh, a function of W. So you can take it inside. And then uh, you can, uh, uh, gradient of the square is uh, two times this uh, value and then gradient over the V hat. That's just the uh, chain rule. And then with the uh, weight update, you have uh, this formula here. So this is not practical to evaluate for a large number of states. Uh, so uh, we uh, do this by sampling again. So we replace this expectation by sampling to have a stochastic gradient descent. So at every step, you update W based on a single new state and its value V pi. So, so now notice first we remove this guy because we're evaluating the expectation by sampling. Second, we now have the capital S T instead of the small s. This indicates a particular sample of state at time t, where a small s is a random variable. So that's a stochastic uh, gradient descent. So for gradient Monte Carlo, you simply use the Monte Carlo target G, that's the return, as unbiased estimate of the v pi, and at every step, you will update the w based on uh, using gt to replace the uh, the uh, ground truth v pi st. Remember, gt is a return from current time step until the end of the episode. So that's gradient Monte Carlo. And, uh, and also we can uh, use the TD. Uh, so TD uh, uses a, uh, a parameterized value function to approximate the true value function V pi. And uh, you're learning, trying to learn a mapping from a state to the target value, which is uh, next step reward plus next st next uh, state value times gamma. So now the target is dependent on W. It's non-ID, non-independent uh, and uh, identically distributed. So uh, I mentioned this before during imitation learning. Uh, so this uh, compared to supervised learning, say you're mapping from pictures to labels uh, and, uh, and you have a fixed set of uh, training data set. Uh, X may be an image, Y may be a label of a cat or dog. And these are not affected by your weights. So they're there, they're static. Whereas uh, for uh, TD, your target is changing as you update W. So it's really a moving target. So for uh, TD, you are using the uh, uh, TD target as a biased estimate of E pi, as opposed to the uh, G uh, for Monte Carlo, which is unbiased. <coughs> so, uh, 
so now if you are taking the uh, gradient of uh, this uh, squared error in a uh, sampling approach a particular sample of uh, st plus one and rt plus one you cannot simply uh, take the gradient inside and do this because uh, this term here is dependent on w that's the non-id part so this gradient is not equal to zero however we pretend it's zero and uh, simply do the uh, uh, call it a semi-gradient so uh yeah this is the right so if you remember the uh, the gradient monte carlo stochastic uh, gradient so uh at this point uh when you are from here to here uh you can uh v pi is not dependent on w that's the ground truth value function and taking gradient over uh, with regard to w does not affect uh, v pi so you can just uh, take it outside and, and move the gradient inside but here this guy the target here is dependent on w so we cannot move it inside strictly speaking so there are research that does the gradient td uh, you can take uh, the gradient on both terms with the chain rule and there are some results uh, but uh, this more common approach is semi-gradient that is you you pretend uh, this first one does not depend on, does not depend on w even though it does and just take gradient over the uh, last term. So uh, semi gradient, uh, because it's not a true gradient, it may not converge to the local minimum, uh, but it converges uh, faster than a gradient at, uh, Monte Carlo uh, due to more frequent uh, update uh, per time step. Uh, instead of per episode and less noisy updates, uh, less variance. So uh, the semi-gradient TD solution uh, may, may be stuck in here. So it may not reach the uh, even the local minimum. So with a linear function approximation, so we're not yet discussing neural networks, which is a non-linear function. Uh, let's first try a linear function first. <laughs> so uh, this, uh, the value function is a product of a weight and uh, the feature vector. Uh, so the um, uh, transpose notation just says uh, it's a, horizontal uh, laid out a vector without a transpose is a vertically laid out a vector so if you have a feature vector of size 2 uh, then uh, this uh, uh, value function uh, is uh, this w1x1 plus w2x2 uh, So that's the uh, same state uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, two features. And taking a, uh, a derivative, uh, taking a gradient uh, on W gives you uh, this. Uh, it simply returns uh, the vector X. So a uh, semi-gradient uh, with linear function approximation uh, simply has x on the right-hand side. 
that's the feature vector. Whereas uh, before we had this uh, gradient operator applied to v hat. Uh, but here v hat is a product of two terms. So this is simply x. So it's step size alpha times TD error times feature value. Notice it's a vector uh, notation for both W and X. So there's a theorem that relates linear TDs, fixed point and minimum of value error, which is uh, less than or equal to one minus gamma. So it's a non-trivial theorem. Uh, so if gamma is uh, large, uh, that is you are looking uh, along uh, time into the horizon, uh, then uh, error of TD may be very large. If gamma is very small, you have a very short uh, nearsighted uh, view, uh, then uh, the uh, value error of TD can, uh, can be very close to the true minimum. So tabular TD is a special case of linear TD uh, by using a one hot encoding of states uth uh, with one for the ith element and zero for all others. So for example, if you have two states, S1, S2, uh, you, uh, you just uh, have uh, two features uh, to recover the tabular TD case. One feature has, uh, is one zero. Uh, another feature is uh, for S2. The feature for S1 is a vector of one zero. Feature for S2 is a vector of zero one. And then uh, the va value function for S1 by uh, the definition is equal to W1. A value function for S2 is uh, equal to W2. So the features simply pick out the corresponding weight for that state. So it uh, assigns a value to each individual state. That's the tabular TD. So if you work out the semi-gradient TD, uh, it, it's the same as tabular TD except uh, using the uh, value function form instead of the, uh, the table form. Uh, but the value function form we saw before is just a, a, uh, the particular weight. So, it, so it's the same. So tabular Monte Carlo is also a special case of linear gradient Monte Carlo. So uh, in, uh, in book uh, chapter 10, uh, it, it talks about on policy control with approximation. Uh, so uh, we saw this uh, figure before, generalized policy iteration for tabular setting, uh, updating the queue for each essay, each iteration uh, based on a table. Uh, but for functional uh, function approximation setting, uh, it's uh, essentially the same, except you use QW, uh, which is really the Q hat here uh, as a, a function approximation instead of a table, and you update the W parameters, which affect uh, the Q hat. Uh, in each iteration. Other things are all the same. So uh, for the update equations, uh, if you have uh, recall SARSA and semi-gradient SARSA with function approximation simply replaces the capital Q, the tabular version of a Q value for state action 
with the Q hat, the function approximation for it. And you have, uh, oh, okay, yeah, I should also highlight uh, the difference is uh, you also have the uh, gradient term on the right, which is uh, extra compared to the uh, tabular setting. And for expected SARSA, same, similar, uh, Q learning, similar. Yeah, just a simple replacement. And you can use uh, linear function approximation uh, as, as Q functions. So W times uh, X, uh, SA, instead of uh, W times uh, XS. So you can, uh, you can replace the gradient term with uh, x with the linear function approximation. So that's the end of the short chapter on function approximation. Any uh, questions? Okay, so uh, I have the uh, Last uh, chapter 11 on policy based uh, methods. So I put a uh, sign here, not covered in exam. So we have been discussing value based uh, methods. Uh, so you learn the value function, uh, particularly uh, the Q value function. And then the policy is uh, obtained uh, by taking an arc max, uh, often implicitly uh, during training. Uh, so it could be uh, epsilon greedy. Uh, policy based, uh, there's no value function. You only learn policy. An actor critique, uh, learn value function and also uh, policy. So uh, policy-based IR, uh, the pros are that it's effective in high dimensional or continuous action space. So a uh, value-based IR is only applicable to discrete action space. Uh, it's inefficient to discretize continuous actions for high dimensional action space as uh, taking arc max may be expensive uh, for very fine discretization can learn stochastic policies. Uh, so value-based IR learns a near deterministic policy, either purely deterministic with the greedy action selection or epsilon greedy, which is near deterministic. Uh, but sometimes, for example, for the game, uh, rock, paper, scissors, uh, deterministic policy does not work well. So, uh, uh, and policy-based policy IR converge uh, better convergence properties. Uh, we saw before, right? Uh, the policy becomes stable long before the values converge. The disadvantages are that it typically converges to a local rather than global optimum. And evaluating a policy is typically uh, inefficient and high uh, variance. So here's the mountain car example. So, so the value function, uh, position and velocity are the uh, uh, two elements in a state. It's quite complex with uh, lots of different, uh, uh, yeah, it's not smooth at all, uh, but, uh, a simple policy uh, that works well is to accelerate in the direction of current velocity. If velocity is to the right, you accelerate to the right. If velocity is to the left, you accelerate to the left. So actually that's a pretty good policy. This shows the simplicity of policy 
uh, you don't have to learn the very complex value function in the middle. So uh, function approximation uh, uh, for value function, uh, we typically use the convention of W uh, as the parameter for the, uh, the Q uh, or V uh, value function parameters. And then we use the theta as a convention for the policy uh, function parameters. So uh, this pi a uh, given as theta denotes the probability that action a is taken in state s with a parameter theta and it's uh, as a probability it's always uh, positive or zero and it sums to one for all actions. So uh, Here's the uh, example to illustrate uh, the stochastic uh, policy. So here, the example here is a partially observable MDP, which means that the agent cannot observe its position directly. It can only observe features of the following form. That is the uh, uh, indicator function uh, wall to uh, direction one, direction two. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, I should uh, put, uh, if uh, there are walls in each uh, direction. So it, it can only see the walls, but it cannot, it doesn't have a GPS to tell it exactly its uh, coordinates. So therefore, it can tell that it's in uh, here, right? Because uh, in, in this position, there's a wall to the north and to the west. This position, there's a wall to the right and to the, to the north. This position, there's a wall only to the north. And these two positions, there are walls to the north and south. So these two positions are indistinguishable. The, the agent cannot differentiate between these two gray states. Therefore, it's a palm DP. The environment is not fully observable. So for a value-based IR, you can uh, 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 use a function approximation to encode the uh, the value uh, Q value function. And for policy-based IR, you can uh, uh, use G function to uh, approximate uh, the, the policy uh, function. So, uh, so for a deterministic policy, because you cannot distinguish between these two gray states, they must have the same action for deterministic policy. Uh, so either move all to the left or move uh, to the west or move to the east in both st gray states. Either way, it can get stuck and never reach the money. So and, and this, there's a loop here. You can get stuck in this loop. This is good, but, uh, but once you are in here, you're stuck. And vice versa, if you go right, uh, go to, to the east, uh, one of the states will get stuck. So it may traverse the corridor uh, for a long time. Uh, if you have epsilon greedy, then it may have a small chance of getting out of the corridor. Uh, 
but for a optimal stochastic policy, that is, you uh, at each of the gray states, you move uh, to uh, east and move to the west with same probability. Once you have walls to the north and south, that's these two states. And then uh, this random move uh, in the gray states will uh, let the agent reach the goal state in a few steps with high probability. So this just shows that the optimal stochastic policy is much better than optimal deterministic policy. So if you have a good memory, uh, you'll say that uh, this contradicts what we discussed before, right? What we said before is that the deterministic policy, optimal greedy uh, policy is always better than the epsilon soft uh, policy. Uh, so this is only applicable to MDP and not a palm DP. So if the agent uh, can uh, can see its exact uh, location at every every uh, uh, instead of the uh, uh, features of uh, walls uh, on the other side, uh, then it can have a greedy uh, opti optimistic optimal policy. But uh, for palm DP. Uh, uh, the greedy policy cannot uh, is not good. So uh, one uh, possible parameterization of the uh, policy is the soft max, uh, which is uh, this formula, uh, where H is the action preference which may be a linear function or a deep neural network. So this sum obviously uh, uh, sums to one for all possible, uh, uh, sorry, this is action, sum over A, for all possible actions. Uh, as a, uh, compared to epsilon greedy, uh, so, for epsilon greedy, uh, the uh, only the uh, the top choice, the greedy choice, has a high probability. All the other actions have equal uh, low probability. So uh, that's not very uh, accurate. So if you look at uh, these middle two uh, action values, they're very similar. So there's really no reason to. Uh, uh, to assign the uh, the third one very low probability. So the soft max, uh, this proportional uh, assignment is more reasonable. And the Gaussian policy uh, assigns the uh, action probability with a uh, normal or Gaussian distribution. So mu is the mean of the Gaussian, the center point of the Gaussian, and the uh, variance sigma uh, represents the uh, how sharp or uh, how uh, flat the Gaussian is. So the sharper the Gaussian, the more deterministic your policy is. So uh, here's an uh, example MDP. So to introduce uh, the average reward. Uh, so here's the MDP. So uh, every action has zero reward except uh, these two. Uh, so if you have a always left policy, uh, then you can compute the value for the state S as a one reward plus five steps later, you have uh, another one reward with the discount factor gamma, so gamma to the fifth power. And then you have five steps later, another one reward, gamma to the tenth. Eventually you have uh, one minus gamma to the fifth with, based on geometric series sum. Uh, or you can compute it with a recursion with the same result. So for the always right policy, 
you uh, travel four steps and get two reward. So the first reward is a uh, two times gamma to the fourth power. And next one, you have uh, additional gamma to the fifth uh, discount uh, over the, pre uh, the first reward. And the sum is this. Uh, or you can use the recursion. So the optimal policy depends on the discount factor gamma. So the table shows uh, that if gamma is 0.5, the left is a better policy. Always left is uh, optimal policy. Uh, if gamma is 0.9, uh, then always right is optimal policy. Uh, when gamma is equal to a 0.841, uh, then left and right uh, policies are, are the same. So if cycles are longer, say each with 100 states, then gamma is a 0.993. Uh, so, uh, so this. Uh, so if you if you have to learn uh, this uh, policy uh, in a uh, without the model, uh, then it may be difficult uh, to learn with uh, the larger uh, gamma and longer uh, chain. As opposed to the simple analytic uh, solving approach for MD, no MDP. So that's why, uh, so this is the uh, average reward as opposed to the uh, cumulative uh, discounted reward. Uh, so it, it's, it's the uh, sum over the uh, expected uh, reward within the horizon H and H goes to infinity. So uh, th let's parse it one by one. So the uh, first uh, term here is the expected reward. If we start in state S and take action A, taking expectation over all possible S prime and R. And the next expectation is over the uh, uh, all possible actions from state S. The next expectation is uh, is the average reward under policy pi by weighting expected reward of each state s under policy pi with mu pi, the fraction of time spent in state s under policy pi. So this particular uh, definition uh, measures the rate of reward or reward per time step for a given policy averaged over all states. So if you compare this to the uh, Bellman equa expectation equation for a uh, state value function with the cumulative discounted reward, the differences are, uh, first, uh, this is uh, different. So uh, because average reward is uh, one step reward average, we're not adding the uh, additional uh, future term. And also this part is uh, different. So this average reward is over a policy for uh, all states, averaged over all states whereas uh, this VPI is for a single state. So the differential return uh, is the sum over uh, all the reward, every step of the uh, uh, reward minus the average reward. So it measures how much better it is to take an action in a state than average reward under a given a certain baseline policy pi is used to compare actions if the same policy pi is followed on sub subsequent time steps. 
so uh, compare this with the uh, uh, regular MDP with uh, discount factor gamma on the top. Yeah, it should be here. So the differential return for uh, this MDP, so first uh, we can uh, get the average reward uh, of left action is 0.2, which is uh, one reward every five steps. And for the right action, it's 0.4, which is two reward every five steps. For policy uh, always left, uh, so you can uh, compute the uh, Q uh, SL, the left action, and then follow the pi L forever. So that's uh, one minus 0.2 plus zero minus 0.2 uh four times plus one minus 0.2 which is uh, 0.4 it, is called a cesario sum for the red action uh you take the red action first and then follow the uh pile left uh forever uh so but you only have a choice at the state s you don't have a choice at the other states so you you take the uh right action for one circle, and then you go around the left circle forever. And then its reward is uh, uh, zero initially, and zero, 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 and then you get a two reward. And uh, finally, uh, you follow the, uh, the left policy, follow pi L, uh, which is uh, computed as 0.4. So you get the 1.4 as the uh, reward for the right action. So the optimal action uh, by the greedy uh, action action is uh, R. And uh, and then if you uh, take right action and follow pi R forever, you can get uh, this sum is equal uh, to uh, point, minus 0.8. And take left action, follow pi r forever, you get the minus 1.8. So again, the uh, optimal action is r based on differential return. So how do you get the Cesario sum? Uh, here's the uh, Grandi's uh, series. So what is the sum of this uh, sequence, infinite sequence? One view is that it's zero by grouping this way. Another view is that it's one by grouping this way. Another view is that you can uh, you can uh, write it as a one minus itself. So it, it's a 0.5. So they all seem reasonable, but which one is uh, is correct? So Cesario summation is uh is defined as a uh, limit uh, into infinity uh the uh, partial sums averaged over the uh, number of partial sums so if you have n equal one uh, then the partial sum is one divided by one if it's two it's uh one plus zero divided by two. If it's three, it's, uh, it's two over three and four and five and six. So this sum eventually converges to 0.5. So this view is more, is, uh, is consistent with the Cesario sum.
So uh, this is how you get uh, this uh, uh, infinite sum over here, 0.4, by uh, performing the uh, uh, this procedure of uh, 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 averaging the, uh, the partial sums. So, uh, so for the average reward, you can also write out the Bellman equations, uh, Bellman expectation, uh, and Bellman optimality. So if you uh, compare with the Bellman equations we saw before, so the only difference is that So the four Bellman equations uh, we saw before, uh, two expectation equations and two optimality equations, uh, you simply replace uh, all the rewards by the difference between the reward and the true average reward. And you remove the gamma, there's no discount factor. So uh, having introduced the uh, average reward uh, objective, uh, now we wanna try to uh, maximize the expected average uh, reward for a given policy uh, by adjusting the parameter theta. So this is policy gradient. Now, uh, we want to use gradient ascent because now we want to maximize our pi. So, so you take the gradient of this uh, definition of average reward, and then you're stuck here. You cannot move the gradient inside the expectation over mu pi, since it depends on the policy parameters the theta. So modifying the policy pi changes the distribution mu pi. So if you contrast this with the uh, gradient descent for optimizing the value function under a given fixed policy pi, we saw before, you can move the gradient operator inside the expectation over the uh, states because the distribution mu pi is not dependent on the value parameters w. So you're optimizing the v hat function. And uh, that's a function of w, but mu, the distribution of state is based on the fixed policy pi. So it's not dependent on the value function parameter W. Uh, so, but for the uh, policy optimization, this mu pi is dependent on the, on the policy pi. However, uh, there's a policy gradient theorem that says uh, you can put the gradient inside as long as you have the q pi at the end. So compare these uh, two, you cannot move the gradient operator inside directly, but if you have this q pi on the right, it's okay. So it's a non-trivial proof. So uh, once you accept uh, this theorem, you can use the policy gradient to uh, maximize. Uh, so for a given state S, for this uh, inside uh, term, uh, it maximizes the average reward uh, in that state. And averaged over all states, it maximizes the overall average reward by updating the uh, parameter theta 
with now it's plus its gradient ascent plus a uh, alpha times the gradient. So SGD is uh, this. So instead of the expectation, we uh, we perform uh, the uh, sampling. So uh, here's an example. Suppose you have a policy, uh, maybe a soft max, uh, maybe some other distribution. So uh, the, at this point, you have uh, the Q value uh, here, and then you compute uh, the uh, the policy based on the Q, uh, maybe by soft max. So so uh, at this point. Uh, the uh, yeah, it doesn't really correspond to the uh, figure. Yeah, let me delete uh, this uh, text here. Yeah, just uh, to sh see the image. Uh, so if you perform gradient ascent after a step, uh, say you 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 you've seen the reward on, on the lower right corner then your policy will be updated to increase uh, the probability of moving right and, and down and decrease the probability of moving up or, or left so that's the uh, effect of updating the parameter of theta Theta is a vector. So uh, for uh, a policy gradient, uh, So uh, by uh, performing, we, we want to evaluate this gradient by sampling. Uh, so the, the outer part of expectation over uh, states uh, with the distribution of uh, probability of state uh, in a uh, under a given policy is expectation of pi. And the insight is summation over A action. So it's not a uh, uh, really a expectation. So expectation is summation over A times the uh, distribution probability of A, and then times uh, something else. So this part is expectation over A. But just the summation without the uh, pi of A's distribution is not a uh, expectation. So uh, to uh, evaluate this uh, policy gradient with SGD, we turn it into expectation by uh, multiplying with pi and dividing by pi. And uh, and then this guy turns into a log, a, 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 a gradient uh, of a log. And uh, this guy is the same. So uh, by uh, by adding, uh, multiplying, and dividing by the uh, pi, we can replace the uh, action variable expectation over action by sampling by the uh, particular sample capital AT. So the SGD update is uh, this formula. 
So uh, every update you have a parameter alpha times gradient of a log pi. This guy is called a score function. And on the right you have the action value function. So I think uh, in here I uh, yeah, it's not really a SGD because you need a sum, summation. So, um, yeah, so this is still difficult to evaluate. Uh, but once you do the transformation now, you can evaluate it with sampling. So this is SGD. So the actor critique uh, algorithm, uh, so we saw this formula before, the Q pi. The Q pi if you had uh, all the Q uh, values uh, for every state, then it's nice, but uh, what if you don't have it? Uh, then you can use the uh, actor to evaluate this uh, Q uh, by this uh, TD error. So the red part is the TD error. So this, we're still in the average reward setting. So we are, uh, we are have the uh, uh, next step reward plus a gamma is one. So we simply add the next state value minus the uh, uh, average reward. And then we uh, subtract the uh, V hat uh, which is the baseline reward to reduce the update variance. Uh, because uh, this guy, if you take expectation uh, over uh, the policy, uh, it averages uh, to zero. So adding it, uh, subtracting it does not make a difference. Uh, so this simply says uh, that uh, we're just evaluating. Uh, so uh, after we take any action AT instead as T, critique uh, this guy uses the TD error W data T to decide how good the action was compared to the average for that state. If it's uh, better than average, data t is higher than zero, then actor updates the policy parameters to increase the probability of AT in state ST and vice versa. So we're not, uh, we really care about the ranking of uh, different actions uh, in every state. We don't care about the absolute uh, values. So, so subtracting the average makes no difference on the ranking. So uh, on the figure, uh, it shows that at every time step, uh, the uh, critique gets a reward, uh, update the TD error, 
the TD error is used uh, by the critique itself and also by the policy, the actor to update the policy. So actor and critique learn at the same time, constantly interacting. The actor is continually changing the pr policy parameters theta to exceed the critique's expectation. And the critique is constantly updating its value function W parameters W to evaluate the actor's changing policy. So uh, here's the actor critique uh, algorithm. So uh, it computes the uh, critique, computes the TD error data, data and then the, uh, the actor uses, uh, the, the critique uses the TD error itself to update its uh, weight parameter W with uh, some gradient TD. An actor uses also this data to update its uh, policy based on policy gradient. So as a result of this interaction, they both get better and better. So uh, uh, actor uh, gets better policies and critique gets a better uh, estimation, a better value functions for the new policy because the uh, policy evaluation, the value function is a policy specific value function. <laughs> So I uh, suppose you have a softmax uh, policy. So this is the uh, softmax policy with a linear preference function. So the H here is a linear function. Uh, so here I think X is also a vector. So it should be a vector. So uh, the uh, critique update is uh, this formula we saw before. When you uh, substitute the linear function here is simply simply the uh, uh, multiplying by the uh, state vector. And the actor updates uh, this equation here. Uh, this gradient uh, is a little bit uh, messy to uh, compute. Hmm. Critique is uh, this. Actor is, no, I think I got it uh, not really. So this shouldn't be, uh, this is redundant, yeah. Yeah, so I have this slide in a different uh, order. So uh, it should be here. So this just shows you how to take the derivative of the log policy. Now this guy, log pi. Uh, so if it's, uh, so 
now both the uh, mean mu and the variance sigma is a uh, parameter of uh, a is a function of the theta parameters so if you take a derivative with regard to uh, uh, the uh, uh, theta mu this is uh, theta mu and uh, on the bottom you have uh, theta sigma for the variance and then you can use the chain rule to work out the uh, derivatives and uh, eventually get this uh yeah i think get, get this one okay so uh there are many variants of uh, policy gradients uh mainly so this uh, term on the right of the uh, uh uh policy gradient could be we saw this uh, Q pi as the uh, actor critique. Uh, actually, I think what we saw before was the advantage actor critique, which is uh, Q pi minus uh, minus the uh, the value. And then you have a TD actor critique. So uh, all the variants are possible. Uh, so uh, this is an example. So by the way, all the slides are from a uh, Coursera course from University of uh, Alberta. Uh, so the uh, continuing task of pendulum swing up so you have a state of uh, beta, which is this angle relative to the uh, up direction uh, is minus pi to pi. Uh, and the beta dot, uh, the angular speed is uh, arbitrarily specified as uh, minus two pi to two pi. So this is just a user imposed range for, for simplicity. Uh, and action is uh, either uh, no action or or uh, uh, the torque is to swing it in the uh, uh, clockwise direction or uh, counterclockwise direction. Reward is minus a bit of absolute value. The goal is to set the pendulum uh, pointing directly up and keep it that way. So the value function is uh, the uh, linear uh, value function uh, for the uh, for the uh, uh, critique. And then for the actor, the preference function is also linear. And then we uh, we set uh, the uh, critique, uh, update the critique at a faster rate uh, than actor with the uh, alpha parameter uh, of uh, actor smaller than the critique. So uh, there are some uh, performance uh, results uh so uh why do we have uh, continuous uh, actions so the the one we saw before we have discrete actions uh three possible actions 
uh, but it's often uh, desirable to have uh, continuous uh, actions. Uh, so it may not be uh, straightforward to choose a proper discrete set of actions. So continuous actions allow us to generalize uh, over actions. So if an action is good, uh, its neighboring actions are also likely to be good. Uh, but discrete actions lack generalization, so each action is independent of others, including its neighbors. So similar to value functions for uh, discrete uh, states. So if you have a Gaussian uh, policy for the uh, pendulum uh, swing up example, uh, say you have a continuous range of actions, acceleration, angular acceleration, uh, from minus three to three, then you may have a Gaussian policy with the mean defined as a linear function and variance defined as the uh, exponential of a linear function. So, and then uh, during the policy gradient, uh, during the actor critique, actor critique uh, learning process, you gradually, uh, the policy gradually uh, reduces the variance and eventually converges to a deterministic uh, policy. That's a typical training uh, process of actor critique. Uh, yeah, I think that slide was, uh, should belong to here. So this is uh, the process of uh, taking uh, the uh, uh, gradient uh, for this uh, Gaussian policy uh, where the parameter uh, theta appears both in the uh, mean and in the variance. So this is uh, in the textbook also. So uh, here is the uh, summary of a function approximation. Uh, so if we are using average rewards, uh, then uh, we can use uh, the different uh, variants of actor critique. Uh, if you're not using uh, average reward, uh, then we use the cumulative uh, discounted uh, reward. Uh, then we can use, uh, if it's your learning per episode, you use uh, gradient Monte Carlo. If it's using learning per time step, uh, if it's uh, not a control problem, so you're doing policy evaluation, use a semi-gradient TD. If it's a control problem, you use a SARSA Q learning or expected SARSA. Okay. Okay, so is uh, everybody still here? Do you go to lunch, go to dinner? <laughs> hmm. I will go for dinner now, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so that's and... the end of uh, all the uh, lectures. Uh, as I said, uh, so the uh, exam will cover uh, lectures uh, one to uh, 10 and also the lectures uh, by color, which is uh, the four PDFs. Uh, so uh, yeah, as I promised before, I, I'm gonna uh, share some sample exam questions, which I will release uh, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, so any, any uh, uh, comments uh, by color on, on the last uh, uh lab? yeah i can say i i just sent an email i recorded some videos earlier today with some uh, how to install pycharm and how to run 
in CoLab if you want to store the files from this car racing, and this is not obligatory. But I have also quickly graded the number four, so I think most of you have done Lab 4 is, has got your points. There are still two missing for Lab 3. And uh, yes, I, uh, someone asked me about if you need to register for the exam. And as I understand from you, Songwai, you don't need to do that. Uh, right. The exam will be uh, uh, based on Canvas. So uh, the exam time I have announced on June first morning. So it'll be it'll be uh, here. Uh, quizzes. I'll, I'll release it uh, uh, on the exam uh, time, so you can uh, answer it here. Okay. So no list is needed, so anyone can join this quiz. Quiz exam. <laughs> So yeah, for uh, Thursday's class, uh, I will hold a uh, Q&A session. Uh, so I'm a little worried that there may be uh, no questions. <laughs> uh, so uh, just a free discussion period, I guess. Uh, Yeah, unless you have a better suggestion, uh, but I think uh, just the uh, uh, yeah, uh, the p materials are are a lot, so uh, I think it's not realistic for me to uh, give a review lecture. Uh, it's hard to cover all the uh, past material, so I just uh, do a Q and A. Yeah. And please send some questions to us if you have some particular question you want to answer and to try to ask it. <laughs> so, and then we can prepare a good answer as well. So no more questions or nothing? Well done, Sangwa. You have spoken a lot during this course. <laughs> well, I, I certainly enjoyed uh, teaching it. Uh, I hope uh, I hope uh, it's not a torture for <laughs> most of the students. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was interesting, and I think it was good that. I made some easy overview labs and short lessons, and then you took the details for those to get a more deep understanding of what's happening and so on. And also the car part, I didn't participate on all those first parts, but there were quite many. So I don't know how the course contents and you know, it's a lot about reinforcement learning, but it's also a lot about cars and vehicles and so on. Uh, you mean the first half of the course? Yeah, exactly. So don't forget to read about that as well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Students. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I'll let you guys uh, go to dinner. Yep, <laughs> thank you. See you on uh, Thursday. Yep. Goodbye. Thank and you, see you. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, see you Tuesday. Uh, Thursday. 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 Yeah. <laughs>